Welcome to the Canes game review for game number 12 of the season, a 4-3 shootout win for the Carolina Hurricanes over the Dallas Stars. Introing this game a little bit, obviously the biggest news coming into this whole thing was the fact that the Carolina Hurricanes and Ottawa Senators made a trade before this game. So as you can see up on the screen now, Ryan Dezingle headed back to the Ottawa Senators. He left a few years ago or two years ago, I want to say 2019 maybe, uh, trade deadline. He left then uh, getting traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets in a separate trade, but basically going with Matt Duchesne. And in this deal, coming back to the Carolina Hurricanes forward Alex Galchenyuk and forward Cedric Paquette. Just breaking down this trade a little bit, um, I waited a little bit to record this particular video because I wanted to talk about the trade a little bit. And obviously we've seen exactly what's happened with this trade uh, in the two days since it's been made. So let's start off with Cedric Paquette. Obviously, Cedric struggled quite a bit in Ottawa to start this season. He's very much a bottom six forward in this league. For whatever reason, though, I believe the Canes really like him and really want him to be part of the system. And honestly, I don't blame them for this one. I'm a little bit excited about Paquette. He obviously struggled in Ottawa, but Ottawa as a whole right now is just garbage. Like they, Their team is awful. They are dead last in the league. I don't think they have a great coach. I don't think they have a great system. And Cedric Paquette, for not being that great of a hockey player, and honestly probably not being much above uh, replacement level in the NHL today, managed to stay on a Tampa Bay team that <laughs> was really good for about five or six years. So that type of thing can't be discredited when you look at Paquette as a whole. I think he's been on some really good teams and he's also been a good role player for some really good teams in the last few years. Obviously things didn't work out in Ottawa. He struggled very mightily but again I think that's more about the Ottawa Senators than it is about Cedric Paquette and as we already know he's going to play Monday night against the Columbus Blue Jackets at home in Raleigh and he's going to be the fourth line center. He's already lined up with Faust and I don't want to say him again, Martinuk maybe. I'm not sure who's actually on the line with him, but he's lined up at that four center role. And I understand the move because obviously as we watched and progressed throughout this season, I think it's pretty clear that Morgan Geeky is not as ready as we thought. He hasn't been bad. Um, he just hasn't been doing much. So uh, it makes sense to bring in somebody who is legit 4C in the league right now, even though he didn't show it in Ottawa in Paquette. I think more so than anything else, this is about face-offs and winning possession more so than, than anything else, because this team really struggles when Jordan Stahl is not the person taking the draw. So I'm excited for Paquette to see what he can do, see what he can become in the league right now, um, what he can just be on this team. It's, uh, it's another role player. I feel like the Canes have been really stocking up on these as of late, and I you could argue Fogel and Martinook are players that are role players on this team already. So it's going to be interesting to see how Paquette mesh, uh, meshes, I should say, with this team uh, for the next little while. Jumping over to the Alex Galchenyuk side of things, he's already been put on waivers yesterday. He cleared today and he's on his way. Apparently he's on his way to the Chicago Wolves. If you saw any of the little Zoom video that... Don Waddell did uh, leading up to or talking about the trade as it happened on Saturday. This was very clearly uh, there was they have no intention of using him at all. Like he, I don't I really don't know what the issue with Galchenik is. He's had some injuries, but he has been a 30 goal scorer. So I think he's more or less looking for an offensive system to play in. Probably not Rod Brendamore's. In that regard, I think he's very, very similar uh, to Ryan DeSingle, who heads the other way in this trade, just in that he needs a little bit more uh, flow and a little bit more offense to be able to play a lot better. So, um, yeah, it, it was very qu uh, clear Don Waddell made no mention of Alex Galchenyuk. They only talked about Cedric Paquette uh, and when addressing this trade, so it was very clear they had no use for him. As far as I know, from what I've heard, he is still in Canada, and I would assume on some level that even though he's gone through waivers, maybe there's a trade to be worked out somewhere. But other than that, I think he's, if there's no trade, he's just going to end up going down to Chicago, maybe quarantining for the two weeks or one week or whatever it is in Illinois, and then moving on from there. 
But as of right now, expectations wise, I unless we get a massive amount of injuries on this team, like two forwards go down, uh, I do not expect to see Alex Galchenyuk step onto the ice and in a Carolina Hurricanes uniform. And I feel a little bit bad for Alex, honestly. Like it's it he was a top tier prospect for a lot of years in this league. He had some great years in Montreal, and then he's just kind of bounced and bounced and bounced around the league. I think this is his fifth or sixth team now. Montreal, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Minnesota, Ottawa. He's just bounced around a lot. So I think he's on pot- potentially his sixth team. And uh, it just looks like he's not going to land anywhere. I look at a team like the San Jose Sharks, though, and I look and I, I have a hard time believing there's not a fit there. Like a team that has literally no scoring right now. I mean, they don't have defense. They're looking horrible. They're looking like they're on the verge of a rebuild there. Could have like a bit of a reclamation project, but at this point, maybe it's just too many times you're looking at that. It's unfortunate. I wish we could have used him um, in a deal like this, but I think Rod's system is just not one that's built for Alex Galchenyuk, and uh, that's unfortunate. And on the way out, uh, Ryan Dezingle. I'm a big fan of Ryan Dezingle. I really, I used to be a Senators fan, so... Um, I really liked I really liked him in Ottawa. He obviously didn't uh, play too well in Columbus on his way out uh, during that acquisition, and he struggled in Carolina as well. And that kind of sucks. I I really do like Ryan. Um, now he gets to go somewhere where there's a little bit more free flowing offense. Again, I talked about Galchenyuk not being a really a fit in Brendan Moore's system. Dezingle fell right into that. He just he was kind of relied on to generate the offense himself, and that is not Ryan Dezingle's game. Dezingle is um, a guy who finishes. He was great on lines with Mark Stone and Matt Duchesne in Ottawa, and those guys will generate play on their own, and Dezingle just had to be there to finish it. And that's why Dezingle was traded for so much at the deadline by Ottawa a couple of years back. So I hope this works out. Obviously, we're there's nothing but good things to say about Ryan Dezingle. It clearly just didn't work out here. Uh, But it's not the fault of the player or the coach. It seems like everything, you know, on both sides was pretty happy with both players. Very unlike the Eric Hall situation from last year. But nevertheless, we wish Ryan all the best. Thank you for being a Kaniac. Thank you for scoring some goals for us. And we wish you just the best in Ottawa and wherever you go after this season. But now let's hop back to the game in net. Jake Ottinger at one end for the Dallas Stars and in the net again for the Carolina Hurricanes. Alex Nedeljkovic. And drawing back in a familiar face, Martin Nietzsche just comes back after that really tough looking hit against Calvin DeHaan. I thought he was going to be a really long, it looked like he had a concussion. Uh, but no, he just, you know, a little bit, probably just a little bit dizzy, disoriented, maybe a slight concussion. Very mild at best. And he's back in. So, and he looked really good in this game too. So this is not, uh, he wasn't rushed back, that's for sure. And what would end up being a very back and forth game, the Canes came out flying as they typically do um, in Dallas, a very frustrated team with Carolina so far this season, have lost all three meetings prior to this one. Ned made a big save early. Pesci has a nice chance from the point. McGinn has this play where he actually splits the defense. This is not something we're used to seeing Brock McGinn do, but ever since he's gone back up to that top line with Svechnikov, or uh, sorry, I should say Teravina and Ajo, he just looks like a renewed, re-energized player. So he splits the D coming into the zone, actually gets his stick a little bit tied up, kind of leaves the puck for Ajo, who gets a shot off, but Ottinger stops it. A little while later, Nietzsche and Pesci, two righties, coming in on a two-on-one, a really good play. Nietzsche uh, kind of like makes a, fakes a pass and then pulls it to his forehand and makes that pass perfectly over to Pesci, who just drilled it wide, like he had a wide open net uh, and just shot it wide. Trocek ended up heading off to the box for tripping up John Klingberg. The Canes... Penalty kill in this one was looking great. And at about halfway through this penalty kill itself, uh, Heiskanen takes a tripping call. He goes off to the box, and we have some four-on-four hockey. Dallas would kill off the penalty on their side the other minute or 48 seconds or whatever it was. And then Alex Sadelkovich, actually a goaltender, gets a tripping call uh, just in front of the net. I don't even know who he tripped. But uh, he, he did. He stuck the stick out and took the guy out. So that is a tripping call for sure. The Canes would head back to the penalty kill. On the power play for Dallas, Nedeljkovic came up huge. Two big saves. One was on Rupe Hintz. Um, and then a, just a little while later, Hintz gets the puck from behind the net. Finds a great pass through. Uh, Jamie Ben there, the captain for the Stars, shoots it. And uh, Nedeljkovic kind of go went post to post and gloved it. Didn't obviously catch the puck, but made a great stop. The Canes would kill the penalty there as well. 
And the first period ends 0-0, a back-and-forth game to start. Chances on both sides. Obviously, Dallas would have the better chances in the period. Yeah, otherwise a very even period. Nedeljkovic coming up big. Ottinger coming up big at the other end as well. Second period opened up, and Carolina really didn't come out of the second period looking too hot at all. Early on, Jason Dickinson got a nice, like a pretty easy rebound goal. I think Ned just wasn't able to kick it too far away from him um, on the clear. Dickinson, just a wide open net, buried it, and the Dallas Stars had a 1-0 lead. And even with that, Nedeljkovic was still looking really solid. He looked a lot better in this game than he did even in the Columbus game, and that one really wasn't on him. Really liked what I've seen from Ned, and obviously he got a little bit stronger as this game uh, you know, kept progressing. And obviously what happens at the end of the game really isn't on him either. Uh, just a tough, tough sequence of events. Just a little while later, though, Jake Gardner coming in... Um, on his offside, actually at the point, makes this great little uh, fake shot pass where Mar and Jordan Martinuk ends up tipping it through the five hole of Ottinger, and we have a tie game at 1-1. Shortly after that, John Klingberg with a penalty sending the Canes back to the power play. Dougie Hamilton had a chance on this power play where he hit the post, and just after the Hamilton chance, Tavo Teravainen finishes off a very beautiful passing play, sneaks the puck past Jake Ottinger, and the Canes have a 2-1 lead with a nice little storm back at the end of the second period. Beginning the third, Ty Delandria ends up getting a penalty very early on, sending the Canes back to the power play. And on that power play, Svechnikov behind the net actually, Trip Tracy talked about it on the broadcast, just a phenomenal effort from him as of late to retrieve pucks on the power play. That's one of the things that can kill you when you're thinking about a power play. Uh, just not winning a puck battle, Svechnikov has been just excellent at them as of late um, he retrieves the puck behind the net finds Jordan Stahl in front who shoots it and kind of gets it in between the arm and the glove of Jake Onger and it flips through him and the Canes have a 3-1 lead as Jordan Stahl continues his massive hot streak to start of the season they showed a graphic on the screen after this goal uh very shortly after where they talked about the uh players with the most I think it's points just points since January 28th and uh, Dr uh, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Kane, uh, and in fourth is somehow, some way Jordan Stahl, who everybody expected to have this many points uh, early on in the season. He's been fantastic. I think he's played eight games or nine games so far this season, and he's just been incredible uh, the whole way through. Again, I don't know what COVID did to this guy, but he, he's just, ever since he came back from it, he's just been on fire. Like, this guy... Um, struggled really mightily last season he's just been really good so far this season not too long after the jordan stall goal to go up 3-1 uh, the canes give one up jason robertson finishes off a nice one-timer that beats nadelkovich pretty cleanly uh, this one was a just in the slot actually i felt like it was a goal where ned was getting a little bit too comfortable um, he had been having a really good game up to this point and uh, just an easy pass into the slot where robertson just one-timers it and uh, i would say most nhl goalies aren't going to give you as much net to see as Ned did on this one he gets beat very cleanly and then suddenly it's 3-2 and at this point Dallas just took over the game it was all Dallas Canes were basically just playing on their heels for the rest of the third period and obviously it ended up costing them Canes took a penalty um I actually don't remember seeing this penalty as I was watching the game but they called it it was a very weak call uh evidently but the Dallas Stars get sent to the Power play very late in the game. Jake Onger actually gets pulled from the net, so it's a six on four advantage for the Stars. And the Canes actually were, again, the penalty kill was working really well. Um, Ajo had this opportunity, and I will break this one down a little bit. Ajo's going up the left side boards, uh, and he got he gets kind of closed off by Heiskanen, and, and Ajo has done this play a few times as of late, um, where he will wait for the defender to really commit and then he spins off with a backhand or a forehand. He he did it against uh, in the Dallas game against... Um, sorry, I shouldn't say against Dallas, but he did it in the previous game where he actually spun and found Fogel wide open in front of the net for an easy empty net goal. And he was going with the same logic here, and what he did, as soon as Heiskinen, you know, closed off on him on the boards, he spun around with a backhand. But what we didn't expect was Heiskinen just swung his stick one-handed blindly behind him, and made a crazy good poke check. And as it comes down the other way, Pavelski comes into the zone, receives a pass, and just snipes on Nadelkovich. Just a perfect shot by Joe Pavelski. And we're tied 3-3 with 
30, 40 seconds left on the clock. But going back to the Aho play for a sec, that's a play where you, you want Aho to just shoot it at the net. There's no icing. There's no anything. Um, you just want him to play it. And of course, he's had a play that it's that play for him, the spin backhand pass or the forehand pass. It's worked. It's worked for him so much um, in the last recent memory for him just to do that play. He's thinking he's no problem. He's going to get the puck to uh, whoever was even on the other side. It might have been Fogel. But unfortunately, a great defensive play made by Heiskin in there. And it comes back down the other way and it's in the net. So, of course, he wanted a little bit safer on those plays uh, from Aho, But I think you're not often are you ever going to get burned on that one. So we had in regulation 3-3. The Canes did have a 3-1 lead in this period, but ended up blowing it. So we head to overtime with the Dallas Stars. And in the overtime session, there was a whole lot of back and forth, but no real big chances until the end. Hamilton had a big one. Uh, but that was pretty much it. It was There wasn't many chances on either side. So we head to the shootout, tied 3-3. First shooter up, Robertson, one of the goal scorers for Dallas. He tries to go five-hole in Alex Nedeljkovic. He gets stopped. Dougie Hamilton kind of did his familiar play he's done in the shootout a lot of times this year. Um, kind of swings left, goes right. So he tried the right pad instead of the five-hole as he usually goes. Uh, and Ottinger stopped him there. Pavelski, another one of the, the uh, Dallas goal scorers in this one. He came down, uh, did a few moves, and Alex Nedeljkovic with a great poke check stopped Joe Pavelski. Vincent Trocek comes down. Um, swings and swings left, comes back in, kind of going slow, uh, but fakes going to his forehand to his back end and roofs it top corner uh, just under the bar on Jake Ottinger and the Canes have a one nothing lead in the shootout. And with the game riding on his stick, Denis Gurionov coming down for the Dallas Stars. He is stopped by Alex Nedeljkovic and the Canes win 4-3 in the shootout. And wrapping up this game, I thought Alex Delkovich was very impressive. He's seen the puck a lot better than he did in the Columbus game from earlier. It's really tough to give up a lead like that. Um, this is supposed to be a team that is the best defensive. Like, if you look at them on paper, they are supposed to be the best defensive team in the league right now. Um, and they're just struggling a little bit right now. They're still figuring everything out. So it, it's really tough to, you know, give up those goals there it's just it's a tough thing to watch because we know they can be better this kind of filters into the next point as well again this is not another game where they didn't play a full 60 minutes but as opposed to last season and especially in the bubble not playing a full 60 isn't generating losses right now it's actually going back and forth which is okay that's kind of what you want but what we do, what we truly want is a team that's going to play full 60 minutes the whole way through but we'll take this win and we'll head on to go play the Columbus Blue Jackets on Monday night. No word on the starters, but what we do have word on is that Cedric Paquette made the drive down from Canada, um, from Ottawa, I believe, all the way down to North Carolina. A very long drive with his dog over the uh, weekend. And he's set to play his first game as a member of the Carolina Hurricanes wearing Dezingle's old number 18. And he will center the fourth line for the Canes on Monday night. No tweets for this video, guys. As we look ahead to the Monday game for Columbus. So that will do it for this one guys. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you liked the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you want more Kane's content. And as always I will see you guys on the next one.